What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another trade recap video. Today I had an awesome day. It's Tuesday, April 26th. I shorted Tesla because 975 was a major support level on the daily that I'd been looking at for a little bit. I took two trades to the downside and made $3,875. Now let's quickly go over the newsletter watch list. Today I was looking at Tesla, Nvidia, Facebook, Netflix, and UPS. And for those interested, this is my newsletter watch list. This is everything that I post on my private Twitter. 30 minutes before market open every single day. It's my game plan and what's going on in my head. If you're interested in getting access to this, there's going to be a link in the description below. So now let's go over the technicals and the why. I'll do the SPY and the Qs first, and then I'll do Tesla last since I found a big trade there. So as far as the SPY, held support, bounced yesterday. Can it continue today? First, it has to clear prior day high and hold above. If so, it has room to 433, 435. Still a weak market, so if buyers can't step up off the open and sellers take back control and breaks pre-market low and stays below, the weakness can continue, has room to 421, 419. And just a side note, right now it's a weak market, it's a weak tape, so occasionally there's gonna be those big bounce days. I'm always just trying to stick with the trend. Those bounce days can happen, that's what happens in a weak market, those rallies can be aggressive, but still realizing that the trend is down, trying to be open-minded to both ways, and I know that any moves higher are probably gonna get met with sellers. And now the cues, so held support and bounced yesterday as well, still a weak market though. Buyers step up off the open and it clears prior day high and holds above, that short-term strength can continue, has room to 334, 336, sellers take control off the open and it breaks pre-market low and stays below, that weakness can continue, has room to 322, 320. And now Nvidia, so a small bounce day, still a week daily, above the prior high and expecting more strength, has room to 205, 208. Buyers can't step up and breaks pre-market low and stays below, expecting more weakness because it's in a downtrend, has room to 191, 185. And now Facebook, so a pretty weak bounce yesterday compared to most other stocks. If it gets above prior day high, expecting more strength, has room to 191, 193. If buyers can't step up off the open and it breaks pre-market low and stays below, expecting more weakness, has room to 180, 175. And now Netflix, so very weak, couldn't even bounce yesterday. Eventually we'll have a bounce day because it's really beat up on the daily. First, it needs to clear prior day high and hold above to get going. Has room to 223, 226. Breaks prior day low and stays below. The downtrend can continue. Has room to 200, 195. And now UPS, and the reason why I was watching this is because it reported earnings. Even though this is not my favorite stock to trade and it usually trades a little thin, I felt like it had a chance to trade on elevated volume, so it was worth watching. It's been beat up on the daily, so if it cleared pre-market high and held above, maybe it could bounce. Breaks pre-market low and stays below. Has room to 187, 185. And now Tesla, so it held support and it bounced the prior day, but it's still below the 9 EMA on the daily. That is a moving average I really like to use just for short-term direction. The short-term strength can continue if it clears prior day high and holds up. Has room to 1025, 1035. If sellers quickly take back control off the open, expecting more weakness, also 975 is at massive support on the daily. If that breaks, it could really sell off. If it gets below pre-market low, has room to 970, 955. Now, obviously, as far down as it went today, I had absolutely no idea, but just looking at that 975 level, look at this huge area of support. It has hit that numerous times, and when a major support or resistance level eventually breaks, that's where those big moves can happen. So really focusing on the daily first, and then thinking in my mind, if 975 breaks, there is a lot of room to the downside. So it's always about the daily first, getting an idea of what it looks like, what it can possibly do, and then breaking it down to those lower level timeframes where I do the pre-market high, pre-market low, prior day high, and prior day low. And I'm always trying to look for patterns, but you'll see in this video that I actually took it at that 975 break, even though there wasn't a great pattern, just because of that bigger picture idea, bigger picture support, knowing that if it broke, it could really get selling pressure. So now let's go over the first trade. So very clearly, Tesla is in a downtrend. Now I wish it formed some sort of clean flag pattern, but knowing that 975 was such a major level, I felt like this was my moment to go for it. And when I see elevated volume and a major support break, that's gonna be my time to size up. So I took 20 contracts, the 975 puts, I got filled at 2731. And then when I get a quick move in my favor, knowing that I kind of chased that, there was not a clean pattern, I just wanted to take it for that support break, I end up taking quick profits and get out of this for a really nice win. I get a nice move in my favor, and yes, it did go down much further, but knowing that I chased it and it wasn't a clean pattern, I just wanted to take the quick scalp like usual, ended up getting out of those contracts, and I sold the full position at 28.90. And here's the second trade that I took on Tesla, and at least this one, I waited for some sort of pattern. It's not the cleanest, but it looks like a bit of a bear flag. So that two-minute candle, the prior one closed green, 
when it started to move higher and then sellers very quickly took back control, if it broke the low of that, I felt like it was going to get more follow through to the downside. So as Tesla continues to show weakness and it gets to that 940 level, I wanted to anticipate the low a day break. So I ended up going short. I took the 940 puts, 10 of them I wanted to size down a bit and I got filled at $29.45 was being a little too defensive with this, but it was hanging around that 940 level a little longer than I wanted to see it to. So when I got a quick move and it made a new low, just realizing it is already down a lot on the day, I took those profits. I sold the entire position at 3015 for a nice win. So now let's go check out the PL. When I can get two good trades like that, you know I'm going to call it a day. Made 3175 on the first trade, 700 on the second one to be up 38.75 on the day, which is an awesome green day for me. So that was the trade recap video. I appreciate you watching. Feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. I just wanna talk about a couple cool things that I have to offer. The first is gonna be my newsletter watch list. This is exactly what I post on my private Twitter 30 minutes before market open every single day. I do a quick analysis of the overall market, the spy in the queues, if there's any major market news that day, and then all the stocks I'm interested in watching, it's usually four or five, if there's any major news tied to them, and all the levels that I think are in play. To the left, this is exactly what I'm posting on my private Twitter. I make sure to add that newsletter. I take a screenshot of the charts, green line to the upside being long, red line to the downside being short, and I make sure to highlight those two levels above. This is everything that's going on in my mind and my game plan going into each market open. Also, I make sure to add a little mental note because every day is slightly different, and here's an example of that. And if you want something that's a little bit less of a commitment, I do offer a live one-on-one -on -one call for one hour. This is where you can ask me questions about my journey, go over setups specifically, everything that I've gone through as a trader, whether you're beginner or advanced, this is a great way to connect with me. So if you're interested in my private Twitter or the one-on-one -on -one live call, feel free to go to callmattdiamond.com or check out the links in the description below.